I got, so it's not the same chapter because I was lazy because the, um, uh, I, I kept the structure of the book instead of like, because uh, I will have, I should do that, but uh, we need to, um, to do a bit of cleaning into the chat, the, the, the directory. So we need like to, so it should, uh, I have to move like the function, which is six, 16 and I didn't do that. So I, I used the free space, but that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to see some advanced testing techniques, which I feel a bit bad because I'm not sure I understand the basic one, but that's good. Um, at least I think like I understand like, you know, that I will just remind you like tests should be self-sufficient. The idea like every test, like when you read the test, you do not need uh, reading as a piece of code that I call it before, like inside of the test, everyone, everything should be. Another principle of test that we have seen previously is like when you are doing test, the principle of test being self-sufficient uh, is higher than the dry principle. The dry principle is basically like do not repeat yourself. So in test, you could repeat yourself. And it's 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 uh, at, at lower, lower priority than test being self-sufficient. One of the other like um, being the test being self-sufficient is like the same ID that you shouldn't modify the user environment at large of landscape should apply to test two as it applies for function. Okay, so today we will learn about text picture. I have to Google that. A helper function managing cyber effects into the test and storing reading objects. We'll learn a way of to skipping tests. Um, so sometimes you want to do the test in particular occasion, that's some specific condition. And then we'll like touch the subject about doing like some mocking or hiding credential if it's really needed. But I will not go too far into that because the author like basically said, do not do that. Okay, test fixtures. A uh, fixtures, uh, it's came like from like uh, working on carpentry and stuff like that, is a tool that help you fix something while protecting yourself. Like you can imagine like uh, something like you put in your working shop that you can put something, modify it while uh, do not like mess with all your stuff. Uh, why do you need like some test fixtures? Is when a test, it can be self-sufficient. As we said, it was like one of the rules. Like you need to modify something, but you need to modify it in a safe way. That's why you are using a picture. Uh, it could be like uh, a constructor chip helper function. We'll see example, a specific environment where inside uh, we can contain the side effects and it can be made, or just a static pipe that you are loading. We'll see an example of it. Uh, a test picture helper function. The, the use case of it is uh, it took a lot of line of code, but it is your memory. So it's something like, for example, like you shouldn't put like in the test because it's like, that like a lot, lot of uh, writing and it pollute like the, the ID. So you should like write like this is the new useful thing function, let's say, and then you are just gonna call it inside of it. As we can say, it's not totally like it's dry, but you need to have like the new useful functions that do something inside of every test because like you use it, you generate an object and you test against these objects and then you work whatever the object should be. So yeah, it's an expectation that the object will be equal. Uh, I have like, to me, sometimes this example feel a bit like, uh, I don't know. Okay, but let's see what's happened in, in for example, deep liars. Um, so this is like, uh, in deep liars, this helpers like usually start with the helpers. Like if we go back, do you, does it still not like, uh, if you go back uh, into like the test that function, you will see like you have all the tests that start with test and then the helper function uh, start with helper. So I went with this one, like, because like the first one uh, was, was not very interesting. Uh, so that give a bit of idea like here, this is probably like, uh, I do not go too much into the code. This is not the, the goal of it. It's basically like testing uh, some like a specific language um, characters. So you create them 
and then we are gonna use all like uh, some some other term we use are gonna uh, fight i mean i gonna comport themselves or behave themselves against it so this is an example of a i think like uh, an easy like helper function and then this we can see like this get lang function will be called like in a lot of uh, uh, will uh, will produce like this length string and it, this length string will be called a lot. So that was an example of it. So let's go back to my presentation. Okay. Uh, what the author said about it is sometimes this like helper function become helpful and then you should maybe think about putting them into the R directory like the where you put your function so you can also use them in a vignette uh sometimes it's also costly to create the function so you need like uh, it's costly uh as in memory or in time one of our ideas like you can use memories basically like you can cache it like you can store it in some way as in memory or as in file and this is the memory package uh that can help you um um, I just provide you a link uh, of it. It's help you like create a memoirs. It's basically a cache of the function, and uh, you have various way of doing it. Uh, it can be like as I yeah, like I said, in in memory or in file, and it's useful if you call that function a lot. So you do not regenerate it. It's go directly like in the cache, which can take a lot of meaning in computer science, but yeah uh just record it instead of generating each time that's it okay so this is this is the, i think we already see a bit the helper function where we are like writing our code into it like this was like an idea that was brought like when we are using them to do something with our function but we did not wanted uh the user to see them and uh you can i i at least i draw the analogy with it uh with the test Okay, managing side effects. This is another text fixtures. Like the use case is when we need to create and destroy a specific environment. Uh, the ex uh, a lot of example, like they said, you should use the with our package. So I will like uh, it's basically like you you will uh, the default uh, default function of the user pack uh, with our package will basically manage the creation of the local. The, some local environment and destroy it for you but i i think it's interesting um like so they say like you should read the test that vignettes i provide a line but i also like just provide the two example of it uh, that i found helpful um so uh basically what the defer function is also like it's kind of like an improved way on the on exit base r function but um it's uh i i do not uh, manage to understand exactly uh, apparently the way the on exit function it needs every time to specify add true and after false on the way that it uh, read the stack uh, apparently like you are creating a stack um i sorry but i do not understand it fully so i cannot explain well but uh if you are using the on exit, you should always uh, use that parameters inside of the test. Uh, if not, uh, you will not necessarily um, go into the, the stack of the function that you are like um, executing, like you follow the, the uh, it will not do it in the correct order. So that's why you should use the, the set, you should use the different function. So read the, uh, I think like this uh, that vignette was more clear than the book, <laughs> so, uh, and a lot of part of them are just. I mean, this is copy paste of it with more detail. So feel free. So here, yeah, let's say like let's go through the example. Here we just go like uh, into like we just go into one digit. Uh, this is the precision of something, uh, and on exit we'll uh, go back to where we were before, like full precision. And let's say like this is just testing like the p so we're gonna pay in three and test if it match three it must it, it must it, it max three so it's good the test passed and if, after the function if you call p or the test p 
is correct. Like we have the uh, correct amount of precision. So uh, the on exit function uh, rebuild um, the not rebuild but like manage the environment correctly. So yeah, you have the same example with the a function that's called needs that's used on the function. So you basically like specify like uh, X, yeah, specify P, you specify a number of digits and yeah, one just to reproduce the same example and need produce two. And when we ask P, uh, it just produce um, three. So if you are like changing something uh, into, I mean, you're doing everything that's managed, like the change the landscape of the users inside of a test, you should, they said you should use this uh, as a wizard package or read carefully and understand well what one exit do. My main take. Does someone want to add something about it? So I'm waiting a bit. If not, I'm going back for, I'm, I'm going for a while. Um, storing it. So this is like, I think this is the example of the easiest one. Uh, if it, it is costly in memory and time to produce the object, why not storing on the drive and call it like with a read RDS? Like you just create a binary object and you read it and you compare to it. I think this is like, uh, and, and basically like how you do that, I mean, this is not mandatory, but like you create into test that pictures uh, subdirectories. Well, like, you know, maybe the make useful thing is like, how do you make this air binary stuff, this air RDS stuff? And then this is like this two one you want when I change for your test. And that's it. Now you test Fufi and you compare it to the useful sync that you have produced. That's you specify a, a pass, you also just use like a, a wrapper for it. So this is like the easiest way I feel like uh, you can do it. Okay. Uh, now uh, we can also build uh, your own testing tools, which I feel I'm far from doing it, but uh, I, have, I understand some of it. So I will try like to provide uh, what I have understand. So, uh, helper defined it inside a test. So what we have seen, like, let's remember like this function, let's say like new useful sync. Uh, and if we go back also to the deployer version, uh, if we go, uh, we can also uh, like, this is, let's say like this, um, we have like this uh, function, this is the helper like the strength trunk uh, that do something. And that's the one we're previously seeing, if I remember. I think it just uh, it just like um, cut the um, this uh, this string from twin uh, from a particular length. Apparently, it can be both sides. Anyway, um, so you do it three times. So three times you are calling a, a string string uh, to create it to create the object. I mean, you can you can add like you you create right, left, and center. But anyway. So you can do is like you can create a function that do it with a direction uh, object, and then uh, it make uh, easier like to read what happens. So inside of the test that you can call, you can create the helper function and put it into the test. Obviously, uh, you will do less error like if you need to copy past a bunch of string uh, doing that. And it also uh, make uh, expectation like this expect equal story more readable. Like you, to, you already understand like, okay, this is right, this should produce that, this is left, this should produce that, center, this should produce that. Okay, so this is like, uh, this part is easy. Then uh, you can build your own expect, uh, expectation. Uh, caution. So the, the, the tell us like, uh, if, your test start to be like a bit fuzzy. Uh, if it's fuzzy to test uh, a function, maybe the function is fuzzy and you should think another way uh, to, to do it. So maybe I'm not, uh, okay. Uh, if you may, uh, but maybe like this is not your function and you may need particular custom expectation. Uh, 
uh, you have like a special vignette uh, on test that about them. The, oh, let's go uh, way deeper than the chapter of the book. So maybe they will rewrite it. I don't know. Uh, what's one useful one is expect error and expect true. Uh, I mean, the, so expect use this is basically checking if what is returned is an error and you can use it. So this is a wrapper of it. The other one is like, uh, you can check uh, if a file exists. So uh, expect push file. Let's say like you want it to like, you have like a workflow that produces a file. This could be like one of the functions that uh, you can use to do it. Uh, one other uh, stuff uh, that test that makes some specific change environment variant. So this is like the, this capitalized uh, stuff that you get when you when you do like sys get env. Uh, and I, I try to form them but I couldn't while I was loading test that. So maybe uh, I have done it wrongly, but uh, they are useful because like you can check if test that is loaded apparently with is testing function. Uh, that's also provided with the test that package or you can check if your package is loaded because like when you are loading test that inside of a package, apparently it uh, creates environment variable. One is called test that with uh, I assume parameter true. And one of those is like test that package with the pack my package. But I failed to pump them when I was trying to do it, as I show here. Maybe my grip was bad. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's no big deal. Uh, oh no, I was 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 is it down? Yeah, it's good. So uh when testing get out, I feel so was the hard, but that's fine. Uh one of it is like skipping is fine. Uh, and we will see like, especially when, when it's for cram, you should skip some tests and they provide a function to do that. Uh, so skipping a test is an option. Um, and you have like the test that package provide you like the skip function and the skip function uh, will test about something. And if not, we'll skip. And uh, here it's is a good example of a function that's called skip if no API. And you are basically like a variable that check like if the API is an API, sorry, <laughs> speak French. Um, the API is available, like you have a function around the wrap, uh, that's wrapping something. And if, for example, this is not available, uh, you are not doing it to test. Let's say like this, this is something uh, you are testing uh, offline. And uh, offline, you cannot access the, this API. So you skip the test. Uh, this is this is so we, we produce like this skip if not API function that's contained the skip and then we do it. Uh, the skip function uh, will return as a, in the result a special result. That's why it's interesting. So it will it will be like transparent. That will tell you like okay the, the API was not available. So this is like the, the message you provide to skip, and it will tell you, but it will not do the test. So the test the results and test go positive. I just skip a bit. Uh, here, uh, they also said like, it's good to call skip if no API in each test, even if it's not dry. So you, uh, you shouldn't call it on the top of your test, but uh, add it inside every test that uh, call function. Like, uh, do not remember what the name of it. Like, let's show me one mistake. Like this test that function. If you use it, do not use it uh, here and use it directly inside of the test that function. Okay, mocking. What mocking is, is when you want, for example, let's say like you have built some uh, uh, REST API and want to test. So there are tools that allow you uh, to mimic uh, or mock this, uh, for example, this, this REST API. But the author said you should avoid it inside of a test. Avoid if you can, because uh, it's rely on another state that you do not uh, manage. Like remember, the test should be self-sufficient. And obviously, like if you are testing against something like another system, if the system is not here, well, you can't. Or if you, the mocking you put into place for the system is not here, you can't. So what they said you should. Uh, so there's a list of package in the book that do that. 
So if you want, you can check this package, but they said they strongly said you should not do it. Um, and uh, yes, that's it. Idem for the credential. Like you should test uh, without the need of live authentication. So let's say you have a package wrong. Uh, I don't know, like some. Um, you write a package for finance people and you want to access some marketing place. For the marketing place, usually you have an API so you can connect to yourself. And usually this API came with a token and the token is provided with the your as a like you provided, like you write it, which is bad, or you, you write it somewhere in your environment. Uh, inside of the test, you should like uh, do some dummy test, let's say like this, this financing stuff. I have like some value, you can just dummy dummy value instead of using it. Okay. Now we'll go into like the special consideration for CRAN. Well, the first one you should read the <laughs> CRAN policy. I haven't done it, but this is here. And here they provide advice that uh, a strong advice that tests can make you fail a common check. What reasons they can fail? So what in case of that, if the test is long, uh, you should use skip on CRAN. So this is one of the skip options that you can use. Uh, if it's uh, if it's CRAN testing, you can use this function, skip on CRAN, and the test will not be run. So it will still run in your like testing environment, uh, but you should use it every time like you expect a test will be too long. Like they said, like if a test is making one more than one minute, your uh, CRAN could reject, reject, re reject it. And also like if the test is flaky, um, I'm not an English speaker, but basically the idea is like sometimes the test pass and sometimes it's fail for maybe some particular reason. I imagine it's like in case you are using some kind of seed or whatever is of the random work and it's not like giving you uh, the, always the same output. So that was it, I think. I do not have build summary, yeah. So any question, remark? I'm wondering. I will stop sharing. So how then. you like See you when? Yes. When you would design a test versus designing like a error message in your function. When you sorry, I, I couldn't hear you well. Um. So some of the some things like right just what behavior of your functions would you want to test for versus just lagging as an error? Uh, Does that uh, make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. This is one of my uh, useful a lot of time question is. Mm, I think I understand it why I was doing stupid exercise in Python. Like a lot of time when you do stupid exercise in Python, you said like they give you like some inputs and you should produce some outputs. But you, when you're doing that, they usually provide you a sample, like three examples that you should do your function that should work against it. And they do not provide you all the cases. And, uh, and then you, you, you try the exercise and then you fail. Because like you didn't like, let's say, uh, let's say something ex you divided by zero somewhere and you didn't think about it and then it generate not a number uh, into your R code and then everything failed. So I think this is a good example on like what kind of like, you know, you, you were building your function but you didn't think of all the use case possible for your function like divided like, you know, it's, it seems stupid, but divided by zero or new, divided by new is something that can easily happen. Uh, in mm -hmm. for like because like you are you are doing some stuff that bring new data and stuff like that. I think this is this is how you should implement test against these cases. Like your function should be like um, should be protect you against weird cases where you will be maybe not see it or. I mean, I guess like these cases are fine because you probably get an error and you can correct it, but there are weird other cases like, um, I don't know, like 
well, it's even worse. Like the, your function is generating something, but it shouldn't generate. That's that's. I I feel this is all I am. I could reply to that. Uh, um, this is also why they said like at the beginning is really like when when you start doing it, you are not doing some tests, and then you get bugs, and this is where you start implementing tests. So that's my answer. But I, I'm not com I'm not like competent enough to to give more than that. No, but yeah, you should test again weird cases and um, <laughs> we'll test again then. They happen a lot, sadly. And every time mm -hmm. I think like, you know, weird cases are not happening, like you, you are working on string and what happens if the string is length of zero? It's still a string, but it have nothing inside of it. Uh, or what happens if the string is, I don't know, <laughs> a number? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's how I, I see it. But we can we can check what we can go back like, to the deep layer what they test, like you know, this idea like they test against like um how do our, their function behave against Corium. You know, they are reading like Corium um or some like accent in Dutch in German, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful to find a package that has good testing that does something similar to like what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying to do that, but you know the the test uh, the build like I, I shake it a lot of first there this is it's true that it's complicated package, so when you go into uh, Dplyr or Stringer, like this is a lot of function, this is a lot of stuff, and you do not see any kind of comment inside of it. <laughs> so I assume it has yeah. some logic about it. Like you should maybe like you know test. It's not matter if you put comments, but it's make like very hard to to do it. I mean, hmm. for myself at least, but. I assume it's like you know the the step to not look to doing your own test and the step of reading professional test is I think it's very like <laughs> to me it was a war but <laughs> that's a, a trouble cl climbing but yeah I can check like package that I'm very familiar with like but um, then you know like also like other package do not use tests that, that that some of them use tiny tests which is another like framework of testing because obviously we should have more than one framework no mm -hmm. uh, let's see <laughs> so i can share this one maybe i do not know even what it test here there's no No test here. I'm just checking like. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's it. Also, like in the classic test, you know, you have to check for the R out that save. You know, like this. Um, let's say like you have a test on an object that called Fufi to 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 do it, and then the test is usually uh, uh, Fufi dot R out that save something like that save yeah no there's that uh, like i can share this link that's i'm checking eh, no i can't here yeah. so this is i copy past plenty of time because this was lagging i can share my screen also on it share screen so we can all see it. So yeah, like we have like a test of SF, which is simple feature. It's a very big package uh, from special and special stuff. It do a lot of stuff, uh, input output reading and some basic stuff like and uh, see there's a lot of stir. 
And if we check, like for example, the aggregate, it go with the aggregate that are uh, out that save version. So here I assume this is what the aggregate do. Uh, aggregate that air. So it's called the library, which, and then it do a bunch of stuff. Uh, not very too complicated. It's it's basically create data, uh, test uh, what's happen if you do a min on an union and not on an union of it, and it do it like what happen if you do it against like a, a famous data sets, the most data it's detailed about pollution that everyone and their grandmother use. I'm sick of it. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, but yes and then we can check what those are fight out on output so i assume like when you are doing like this it's load the package uh you are doing the aggregate it should generate i think it tests against that it should produce a simple picture collection with blah, 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 blah. and then it tests again that etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is what this is I think very simple one. Even a simple one is complicated for me. Let's see, like another one. Distance will be complicated, my ass. Uh, distance always a mess. Plot's probably complicated too. Let's go read. So it starts to be complicated. So this one is calling, uh, is setting an environment loading uh, some drivers, checking if some driver are present. Let's see then what happens in the, where, which one I have read. Just checking like if the results that it's, uh half is the same that uh should be produced so yeah like uh i do not know why the the setup like the they change the the time zone i'm not smart enough to understand that uh but uh yeah they basically like call the call a package that have like some some data and check if the package return the correct object class of the the correct class sorry of the object This seems like a lot of human work compared to what the book is suggesting. I don't know. Because do you do they go back and read all of those or? I think I I uh, I do not know. I, I remember like uh, when we started the book, they explain a bit like this this idea. But like I say, other people use user like testing environment. Like what what should those a package should I check like? So it's mm -hmm. cool have test that. Uh, Let's go into tie levers. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, one simple. None of them are really simple, by the way. <laughs> um, T ball. This one should be simple. Hopefully. So, test. Okay, so at least this is simple. So we have like let let let's we have plenty of tests. We still have the question the question about the z z z z z. I do not remember exactly what it means, but I think it just forces it to go last. Yeah. Oh yes, it's it's a, it's a hack, so it go last. Uh, let's say like the helper data that error. So it creates a random tables with like uh, any value basically with various type yeah i assume like it's a float here it's probably integer or not integers this is a true false and a characters factors a date a date time a list and a list of a list of a list with any so it's it's yeah this is an helper that produce like the this df all and then you have a bunch of stuff, but empty. And it's probably called into another one, 
uh, which one should I try? Like, do you have a table name function that you want to test? Name maybe. Watch. See no comments. <laughs> uh set repair name okay so yeah, you said all those function names are like pretty good. so you set some name and this is probably like a function that set repair name and you expect equal of x when you use set repair name of x i do not know why because it's simple the name should be one, two, three, A, B, C, and it should set name should return one, two, three, A, B, C, I guess. I mean, I can load R if you want. Oh, what the hell is set name is? Um, table maybe. Table maybe. Or it might be a helper. Oh, well, yeah. you know, let's let's be brute. Uh, if it's a helper, like we do. Let's Okay, let's see. Set names. Oops. Yeah, so it exists. So it's in L long. Uh, I do not want to read what it does, but it's loaded now. It's not T-ball, obviously, it's in Erlang. I do not know if it's loaded with tie givers. Let's see. Yep. It's in uh, per, apparently. OK, so it's good. So I think I should load test that also. I was wondering Erlang and per. Yeah, Erlang, yes. Here, we have, we have, it's loaded. Ah, yes. I can, uh, uh, no. Uh, well, it's 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 a lot of um, can I can I uh, improve it so you can read better? I just increase that. <laughs> Is it better? Mm -hmm. uh, let's try like the expect that and see what happens. No, I do not I want think to. Think it's gonna work. <laughs> what? I I don't think all the functions will be. Let's try. My God. <laughs> yeah, because they have all the like helpers and um let's see. Set set, set repair name. Yeah. It's okay. See, this is not that easy, no? No, you'd probably want to like clone the whole project. How is that? Come on, do we fill the spelling it? Oh, yeah, because it's the function where we are testing. But mm -hmm. I know that Tibble, no? It's in the old Tigers. Yep. Let's go back to see where it was. Anyway, that's that's my experience exploring a <laughs> test. <laughs> so yeah. I'm stopping sharing, but it's it's crashing. <laughs> I'm dying. Anyway, that's it. So I don't know what we can do. Uh, 
I think one feedback we can provide them is maybe some exercise. And it could be to have like a simple package mm -hmm. with more simple tests. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would always good to have. I'm just wondering, I, I should probably go back and read the um remember the beginning they did that. Uh mm -hmm. like going through a worked example kind of thing. I'm just wondering yeah, if I go yeah. back and have a read of that, if that makes anything clearer, but it was yeah. so long ago, I can't really remember. <laughs> I think like the test that vignette also provide a bit more insights on everything. Yeah. And uh, I feel like maybe these three chapters are still in work, I will say. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because um, it seems like they stripped a lot, like when I was watching the video. So maybe in the process of making the section leaner, they lost some stuff, I don't know. But yeah, I think like, um... Which I don't know. Uh, I don't know how we can like. Uh, I think introducing tests should be done uh, in some way, and here we are introducing tests into a package. So you add a layer of complexity, at least for me. So if I if I uh, I think I should read like a bit more about this test driven development, and then move on. I don't know. I think like I'm like skipping a step, but could be wrong. That's why the level of the the stair the step are, are high. Anyway, are you still here? Because mm -hmm. I, I think my zoom crashed. Yeah. You can hear really you, but you're frozen. Oh no! There you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, interesting. So I'm gonna try to think about what I would test. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I don't know. I always think like making sure the data that's going in is the right kind of thing. And but personally, I'm just gonna leave tests to when I'm uh, like ready to hack Google or something. Yeah, but I thought that it. tests were. It seems like the test is you should test. The behavior of your function so not so much mm. testing what a user gives you that i think should yeah. be more like an error or yeah or that's true i feel like another possibility is you expect something from another package like dplyr mm. does a certain way of left joining or something like that and then suddenly not maybe not okay. suddenly but you not to your uh knowledge the uh the way that it does left joins changed or something like that um, and it's no longer producing the output that you need it to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Because it's like some under the hood thing. And then you can like pinpoint <laughs> where it failed. Yeah. I feel like part of testing, you know, we're reading this and I don't know where y'all are at on package development. You know, your packages are in various states, I'm sure. Um, but I don't know that anybody has like packages that are out there and being used by a lot of people or even 10 people. I think we have kind of got like our like our own little pet projects and mm. we're like in our own little universe in our in our, in our mind. And we don't know what other people are going to do. We don't know what's going to happen outside of what we're programming. Um, and so kind of, I feel like testing needs to happen after you've given it kind of like a beta. Like you've you put it out there in the world, people have downloaded it, they've used it, and they're like, wait a second, it doesn't work the way I expected it to. And you can go back and you can fix it. And then you can check to make sure that in the future that doesn't happen again, maybe with a test. I don't know. It, we're, I, I feel like when we're reading this, we're like expecting to have a fully formed package. Like we're going to write a package and it's going to be dplyr. 
tomorrow or something like that. It's nobody's nobody writes Deep Heart was not written in a day. Um, I feel like that's kind of what reading this and looking at all these this, these repos feels like. It's like we're getting ahead of ourselves. Mm. Yeah, I think for a lot of beginners, that you know, that's how it would be done, kind of thing. And then when there's people that design things like Deep Plier, they kind of already foresee some of the problems that might come up, and will start doing the tests first, and then write their function and their code. I think, but. But like this, just it seems like way out of the road because I'm still trying to work out what my functions do, <laughs> and then and I'm supposed to write a test to, before it. If you're doing like test driven development kind of thing, but I think I'll leave that till I'm I'm good at something. <laughs> it feels like yeah. maybe a a, a good mod moderation might be to like cycle back and forth between working on the package working on the functions and then working on the test and going back and kind of you get a better feel for what kinds of errors you think people are going to run into or you're going to run into mm -hmm. yeah well the, the advice was like you when you write a function you should write a test so i do not know like how should we follow this advice? Like, should we even write a simple test just because we have done it, so it's down? And then inside of the package, it's built. Like, even if you check complicated package, like the simple feature one, it's basically what it does is like testing if the objects on loading correspond to the correct class that the object should have. So it's not that this level of test is not complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems trivial, but maybe it's not. I do not know. Like, um, uh, I'm not experienced enough, like, to to tell if it's not. But it seems like at least they are doing it. Even if you check, um, like, the, the, the dipliers or whatever, else, like, they are basically checking, like, uh, some very the first the first tests usually are trivial, and then it gets like very complicated. So I don't know. <laughs> You're like maybe uh, it's it's huge, but yeah, obviously we're not gonna build deployer. <laughs> I actually just went back to the chapter two, and there they did walk us through a test for the <laughs> for the that little string package that we put together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I, it's also good like to be confronted at something like you do not uh, fully understand. It's because like obviously you have room to progress, and uh, yeah, you can you can also see that that way. Like you do not progress in interesting stuff if it's too easy. If it was too easy, it was it will not be interesting stuff. Like we will not be doing it. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if 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 it was too easy, it will already be down uh and automized or whatever and uh i think test is not that easy uh i feel mm. so it's good i mean it's fine if we are not like uh, did you decide on who will present next week no i thought um we had some or maybe it's the week after. Unfortunately, I'm away next week. Uh, Alo FME is in two weeks. We check with him already. Ah, uh, yeah. I probably, sh I mean, I feel bad because I forgot mine, but I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I wanted to, <laughs> to, to put some shame on well, you so you do it. I know. I, <laughs> I really dropped it. Well, let me see how long it is. I have to. No, you do not decide before. I mean, you decide before checking. You do not check the length of it. And then <laughs> you it. It's just like with now teaching and uh, are you going the back first to... week of the semester. Yeah, today was the first day. And, oh. Uh, My wife is, uh, uh, is not teaching well, now. 
Yeah, yesterday actually was the first day of the semester, but I'm teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 3 to 4 p.m. It's not the most ideal time, but. Uh, function documentation. Okay. It's probably not that I difficult, can, no? Yeah, I can sign up and I'm back like, what kept happening, why I kept missing is because I was like never going on my computer. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I kept missing all my like calendar because my phone, I kind of mute everything. Oh, like, it's too big. Calendars. <laughs> so that's why I kept missing the last month. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big chapter yeah but i think it'll be quick yeah but like if you read these chapters documentation yeah if you check these chapters like you know it have like a, uh it have footnotes it have link and mm -hmm. if you read like the chapter about tests you do not see that level of detail mm -hmm. yeah so the, I, I think like the chapter on that they are still working on it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Sorry. like, yeah. Um, and there's good notes from the other cohorts for this chapter. So it should be easy for me to present next week. I put my name down. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back um, the week after, so go. be back in time for vignettes. Oh yeah, you're doing your big hike, right? No, I did that um, over Christmas. Oh, I'm off to Hawaii oh. for um, oh. to hang out in a museum. So, but I will, I'll send a photo of a nice cocktail on the beach somewhere for you. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> like, uh, like, say, like, with a snarky comment, like, I have understand test with, like, uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, look what tests made me do. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be helpful. I would like it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, seeing people happy, like, does make me feel happy. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Is anyone thinking about going to the posit conference? But when is that? Where is that? Uh, it's a different time of year now. It's in September, I think. Chicago, no? It's in the hometown of Ryan. Oh, is it in Chicago? It's in yeah. Chicago, yeah. Ah. In September. I don't know. I will. I'm. I'm still an academic at Earth, and I do not want to spend like that much money on a conference. <laughs> it's way up to me. <laughs> Oh, oh, how I much is it? it? It's free, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> what the hell are you saying? Well, no, I mean the registration. I, I don't ever Does it charge it? registration? I don't know. Let's check that. Rise of Posit Conference. Uh, I mean, it doesn't say on here. Let, let me, let's look at 2020 last year. Um, Come on, we just want the price. <laughs> I I don't. Well, while she's looking that up, um, the I don't know if y'all are familiar with the Sloan Sports Analytics Conference, but it's essentially run by MIT students for people who work at ESPN on and on sports teams in the U.S. mostly, but some in Europe. Um, and of course, there are statisticians who want to do research in sports analytics, and they go to this conference. Um, it is usually about a thousand dollars to go to this con. Just the registration alone <laughs> is a thousand dollars, and nobody really knows what. Or none, none of the attendees really understand why. But yeah, I mean, you want to select on something, no? I mean, <laughs> at, at some point, at some point when it was like five hundred dollars, it was like you know, uh, a whole bunch of white male undergraduate students who are, are into sports casually, or maybe it's like a fun hobby for them. And it mm -hmm. was just, it was not fun, um, <laughs> let's say. Uh, but then when they upped the price, suddenly it was like just the people who are really serious about oh. sports analytics. 
and suddenly you, you excluded these uh these kids essentially and it was a better conference um but it was more it had to be more expensive i don't know i'm not sure if it was worth the trade-off hmm. okay uh, yeah i was completely wrong there's something about the, some, some different art conferences back a few years ago um yeah someone one of my co-workers just went to a conference actually in hawaii and he said and none of the none of them are the he said it, the registration was like fourteen hundred dollars, and that it's not even it's it was just like an excuse to go to Hawaii. It wasn't even like that good. <laughs> you have five thousand dollars in your research fund. Fourteen hundred <laughs> of it is just for conference reg registration. <laughs> yeah. So this says our studio conference twenty eighteen was about one thousand dollars. I don't know if that's like really bad. I don't know. I, I don't know either. That's some money. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot. But you know, sometimes you can like take the the selfie with the Adelaide weekend. It's worth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, it's in Chicago, so I don't know. It's not far from me, so. Yeah, we can have a meetup. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, my yeah. I kind of should know Chicago better. My my wife family is from Chicago, and every time uh, I, I I every time I went there, like we never go too much into Chicago. We all stay like in this crappy suburb, and because yeah. I'm driving <laughs> to Chicago is basically one hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. We we live in Chicago proper, close to the University of Chicago, relatively speaking, close, uh, and family is an hour away in, in Naperville, mm -hmm. um, it, it, one of the suburb cities. Yeah. Uh, and yes, it, it feels like two different cities, essentially. Yeah, so, I, 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 I there's so many suburbs. <laughs> yeah, Chicago is very spread, like it's, it's super spread. Yeah. And it's difficult, like, because obviously you have a lake, so you cannot go around. <laughs> <You> cannot just... <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, but then you go to Michigan. Um, yeah. anyway yeah yeah it's gonna be i will check depend on the price and i don't know yeah i think they only like just announced like the conference so we'll see what they say about <laughs> they, they also like have announced or non announced like um, a cooperation i don't know you call that with um palantir the the big uh, data analytic providers uh of tl i don't know if you check at that but I'm just it's a big, uh, big analytic platform that's used by uh, a lot of uh, contractors and uh, depart federal departments. And it's apparently managed by the Antichrist. <laughs> I do not know too much about it. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Palantir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw something on Mastodon about how um our studio or P posit is partnering with palantir for some particular product but i didn't catch the details i didn't understand i don't know like i will never spend money into their product because money <laughs> so I, it's usually provide also like i do not like you know this i, I do not think like this all ml platform whatever is like bring a lot to the table but uh, i could be wrong anyway so yeah the partner was it so it was like kind of the drama at least in mastodon i didn't see too much into twitter's but i was like so may maybe the price of the conference would be cheaper if they say <laughs> <laughs> with the antichrist <laughs> but yeah i do not know too much uh this tl guy apparently it's an american celebrity but i do not know him i don't know it's PayPal was it or yeah I think this is what I have read quickly yeah he is very libertarianish whatever apparently like it's more libertarian than libertarian he seems to be like really into Lord of the Rings I know he's got a house somewhere in New Zealand like everyone yeah, he's, they all have he's doomsday bunkers and stuff yeah 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 that was like eight years ago right everybody was yeah. like moving to New Zealand just in case <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? 
just <laughs> just in case. I, I don't know, okay. like in case something that ha happens in the U.S. I, I don't know. Yeah. New Zealand is beautiful. From what it's I've heard, true. I haven't I, been there. I, I do not need reason to go to New Zealand. I will happily go like uh, without any kind of other like you know. <laughs> yeah, I think he is actually. If it's the same guy I'm thinking of, I think is he designed this like massive ugly mansion thing that was going to be on this like lake of natural beauty and then it got declined they just said that no, that looks like crap yeah. so. <laughs> well anyway probably have too much money but um yeah. anyway, that's it so it was the news that um on on the mastodon sphere but yeah pause it could be fun i don't know i never went to this kind of private i mean private I've been to SAS conferences before oh. when SAS was still <laughs> a thing. Um, it was a nice conference. Uh, it felt, it was very different from a JSM. I don't know if you've been to a JSM, but it was very different from the general feel of a JSM where JSM is kind of like, everything's pulled up by its bootstrap and you know, like it's there, but um, you can kind of work it out yourself. It was very oriented towards people in business, let's say, this yeah. SAS conference, which is, of course, why SAS exists, essentially. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I should, I should, I should, I should go to like a, a software. Uh, I mean, I, I listened to some podcasts um, and one of them, like, it was about like the beginning of Conda and PyData. And basically, like the guy was attributing the success of Python and Conda, uh, basically because they were in all the conference and they were very good at com uh, at doing conference. And the <laughs> conference was like uh, conference, 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 and they were all conference. And this was like all oh, they create the brand and connect to other people and the importance of networking in this conference. I was like, whoa, holy shit! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe it's important. But I would be happy like to see like some book club people. So mm. even if I do not go to my conference, maybe they go, uh, you know, that they used to do that in concerts. Uh, you have like the concert, you pay the, a lot of money, and then you have the off, which is less expensive, and uh, all the bad, all the good kid goes. I don't know if you if you if you have that in the US. Have what? Yeah. Well, you have like let's say a huge group. Like that, but the price of the ticket is too expensive, and usually, like a lot of French groups do that. Then they do like the yeah. show, and then they go outside and do a free show. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe they do it. That'd be nice if they could do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In a pub. Yeah. I've got a friend who's moving to. Uh, what's it called? It's Ohio, I think Columbo or something. Oh, I mean, he's got, I mean, he's I got mean, Columbus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Columbus, Columbus is the, yeah, that's all. The main cities. Yeah, he's got a oh. postdoc there. So he's going to go, um, go visit. And then I've got another friend in Wisconsin. So I'll probably go there and then sort of road trip down to yeah, Ohio. If, if, you, if you are close to Cleveland, go say hi. And we are not too cool. far. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> and uh yeah ohio is way better than uh some people say i would say yeah it have, it yeah. have a bad i don't know like uh every time i said like oh i'm gonna go in ohio i won't say oh sorry <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's not that yeah. it's not that level i do not know Columbus, yeah. but yeah it's a yeah. kind of feel yeah something about buckeyes as well i saw yeah yeah, I, one of my friends got me a. Uh, oh, it's, oh, I'll get it. Okay. Oh, Damn, um, if if there was one of those. Of... <laughs> Jesus, yeah, that's yeah. my team. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, I got that yeah. for like uh, my birthday, and it's got like dips holders. They're so well designed. Oh, what? Yeah, you can put like your nachos apparently here, and then your dips fit into those. Oh my Wait, god. I, never heard of that. I actually don't own a cheese head, but I am a big Packers fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just imagined I just imagined the poor worker in some factory somewhere that have to produce that. 
And this is apparently it's it's made in Milwaukee, and oh. it's uh, it's a union made one. Oh my god! So I'm I reckon it's no. like it's like yeah. If you want a legit, if you want like a legit thing, then that's the one to go for. Plus, it's um, I wore it around Auckland, like in New Zealand, and then like people that I think were tourists, they would shout out like "Go Packers!" and then I got taught I had to say. Uh, is it Aaron Rodgers rock and roll? Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Rock and, and, you go, rock and roll. Yeah, so I said that. It was great. <laughs> and then people thought, I mean, obviously my accent just probably gave it away, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I will go to bed because I have two kids to bring yeah. to school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's that's it. So see you next yeah. week. And yeah, we can check the price. Of deposit conferences said february they'll 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 have more information in february so all right maybe a couple of weeks and we can maybe jenny on. maybe when we meet jenny we can ask her for is, yeah. that, is that scheduled or is that like tentatively scheduled uh, I think it's scheduled. I'll check with john yeah and i think like we can like um we can ask her for discounts if we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm I will, helping you with your book <laughs> I, 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 I will uh, I will say, you know, you work in academia, you know what it is. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can we can we can like you know clap and then and be cool or whatever. I'm yeah. fine going to the gallery or whatever. Maybe we could volunteer or something to get free. Yeah, like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. We can talk about our experience doing <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, bye, everyone. Yeah.